Hi, I'm Greg Oppenheimer. Welcome to Online Radio Theater's production of The Bickersons. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you to share and subscribe to be notified of our future productions. And now, time for the show. From Hollywood, it's The Bickersons. <laughs> Yes, John and Blanche Bickerson in The Honeymoon is Over by Philip Rapp. John, you're snoring again. Over on your side. Go on. He'll stop now. I know he will. <laughs> stop it. Stop it. There, there must be something that will put a stop to that hideous snoring. Why do you do it? Do what, Blanche? Snore. Hmm? Huh? Snore. Okay. John! What is it, Blanche? What's what's the matter? What's the matter, Blanche? There isn't another woman in the world who'd sacrifice her youth and her looks to live with a man who rattles himself to sleep like a lot of old bones in a bag. What do you think I'm made of, John? Old bones. You've got to stop it. Stop what? That snoring. Oh, it's just your imagination, Blanche. I never snore. John Bickerson, how can you say that? Very easy. Listen, I never snore. I never snore. I never... John! What? What is it? What's the matter? Why don't you let me sleep, Blanche? What about me? I'm a nervous wreck. I've got crow's feet around my eyes. My forehead's all wrinkled and my chin is sagging. I'm beginning to look like an old hag. It's true, isn't it? I wouldn't say that. Why not, John? I'll be awake for the rest of the night. You do think it's true, though, don't you? What's true? I'm beginning to look like an old hag. You're not beginning to look like an old hag. Why do you emphasize beginning? All right, you are not beginning to look like an old hag. Good night. Oh, I don't know how any man could be so cruel. Is it any wonder I'm getting old before my time? What time is it? It's after three o'clock. What time did you come in? I don't know. Put out the lights. Last night, you didn't come home until two in the morning. What were you doing? Working. Sure. That's always the first excuse. If I don't fall for that, you have a second excuse. And then a third and a fourth. What were you working on? A fifth. I thought so. I'm just sick and tired of the way your whole life is wrapped up in a bottle of bourbon. Maybe you'd like me better if I wore a label and put a cork in my mouth. You needn't wear a label, Blanche. There you go with your subtle insults again. Never a kind word or a compliment. I cook for you. I scrub for you. I sew for you. Do I get any thanks? Thanks. Thanks. That's all the thanks I get. No love. No affection. How I envy Louise Shaw. Her husband treats her more like a friend than a wife. Well, settle down, will you, Blanche? No, I won't. You think Louise ever makes breakfast for Mel? Not that lazy lump. She makes him go to work every day without a morsel of food. She gives him nothing but a kiss for breakfast. <laughs> Would you be satisfied with that? Sure, send her over in the morning. Very funny. I might have known you'd be like you are. Selfish, inconsiderate, and thoughtless. You didn't even send me a Valentine's card. St. Valentine's Day isn't in till tomorrow. It's still tonight. Tonight was yesterday. Today is tomorrow. What? And I know you didn't send a card because you didn't send me one last year. Well, I forgot last year. You always forget. You forgot my birthday. I bet you don't even know when you married me, do you? 
No, I don't. John Dickerson, you don't know when you married me. When? Oh, I thought you said why. You're not even listening to me. You don't care what happens. I wish I'd never been born. Oh, Blanche, what's the matter with you? Why don't you go to sleep? You better listen to me, John. We'd get along a lot better if you'd think of me once in a while. Whenever there's an extra dollar in this house, it goes for your pleasure. Why, only two weeks ago, you had your life insured for $10,000. What about it? Well, you're always thinking of yourself. Myself? What kind of idiotic talk is that, Blanche? If I die, you get the 10000 You know perfectly well you have no intention of dying. You only got your life insured to tantalize me. I could drop dead tomorrow morning. Oh, you say it, but you won't do it. Blanche, what's the matter with you? Do you realize what you're saying? I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. I'm sorry. That's okay. Just calm down. Try to get some sleep. I can't sleep. I'm too upset. You can't stand the sight of me, can you, John? I can stand it fine. Good night, Blanche. You've changed, John. You're not the man I married. You used to have plenty of ambition. Hmm? Whatever happened to your get up and go? It got up and went. Blanche, would you quit arguing and let me sleep? You married me because you loved me, didn't you, John? It wasn't because I had a little money, was it? No, no, it wasn't. And even if we had our lives to live over again, you wouldn't marry me for my money, would you, John? I wouldn't marry you again for all the money in the world. There you go, starting all over again. Oh, Blanche, I'm so sleepy. I don't know what I'm saying. Will you please let me sleep? I'm not going to stand for it much longer, John. I wouldn't feel so bad, except I'm so sick. I could die. What's the matter now? I'm sick. I, I get fainting spells all the time, and the doctor doesn't know what it is. I know I'll never recover. Don't be silly. You'll recover. You've got a healthy constitution. I have not. You have, too. You had pneumonia and you got well. You had the flu and you got well. You had the mumps you got well. You've had 60 diseases and you always got well. I never saw such a healthy woman in all my life. Well, what about these fainting spells? You'll recover from those, too. But if you ever get locked, Jaw, you'll bust. Blanche, all you want to do is keep me awake. Isn't that right? We wouldn't argue at all if you'd just be a little nice for a minute. You've been up to something again, Blanche. What is it? I, I haven't been up to anything. I'm just hurt that you don't love me. Who said I don't love you? Well, you never tell me you do. I tell you a thousand times a day. I offered to pay a man $50 for a six-inch tattoo that says John loves Blanche. Why did you object? Because it would show when I wore my evening gown. Well, I was going to let him do it on me, too. Anything to put a stop to that same question, night after night after night. If you'd only say it once, of your own accord, I'd, I'd never ask you. Okay. I love you. Do you love me only? Yes. When I'm away from you? Yes. Well, say it. I love you only when you're away from me. Oh, that's a fine thing to say. Say it the right way. I love you. How much do you love me? How much do you need? Fifty dollars. Aw, oh, now wait a minute, Blanche. You promise me, John. I know, but I can't give you anything extra this month. That's what you told me last month. Well, I kept my word, didn't I? Now, what do you want fifty dollars for? The rent. Oh, the rent is right here. It's in the cookie jar. No, it isn't. It is, too. I looked there yesterday. You didn't look today. What? Now, Blanche, don't tell me you spent that money on something foolish. Oh, no, no. I gave it to a bookbinder. A bookbinder? What do we need with a bookbinder? Our book is in fine condition. Not that kind of a bookbinder. This man goes to the racetrack. He's a trout. A trout? The racetrack? 
Oh, Blanche, Blanche, did you bet that money with a bookmaker? Put the lights on. Now, don't get excited, John. He brought back the ticket. Here. Oh, a $50 win ticket. How could you take my hard-earned money and gamble it away on a horse? I work my fingers to the bone and you squander every penny I make. You never see me betting horses. I've never been to a racetrack in my life. I, What's the name of the horse? Valdina Rips. A bum. A worn-out goat who hasn't won a race since Del Mar. Oh, Blanche, why did you do it? Did he win? No, he ran second. Fifty dollars tossed away. Ah. Well, why are you tearing up the ticket, John? Because it's no good. I ought to make you eat the pieces. This is the worst thing you've ever done in your life, Blanche. At least you could have played him to place. Don't throw the pieces away, John. What makes you so sure it's no good? Well, you played the horse to win, didn't you? Yes. And he ran second, didn't he? Yes. Well, then the ticket's worthless. Here, watch your $50 go out the window. There. I knew you had something on your mind. I'm sorry, John. Oh, what's the difference? Who won the race, do you know? Yes, I heard it on the radio. Well, who won it? Disqualified. Disqualified? Yes, the announcer said the winner of the race was disqualified. Ah, I wish I was dead. Good night, John. The Bickerson starred Brad Zinn as John Bickerson and Alison Arngrim as Blanche Bickerson. The program was produced and directed by Greg Oppenheimer. And this is Phil Proctor for Online Radio Theater, saying so long until next time. Snooks, I have a favor to ask of you. Snooks, your father is talking to you. I don't want you to be my father no more. What kind of talk is that? You hate me. Nonsense. I spanked you this morning because I love you. <laughs> you got a funny way of showing it. But it's the truth. If I had hated you, do you know what I would have done? Yeah, you'd have killed me. No, I would have left you alone to grow up into a selfish, greedy girl who always has to have her own way. Now, how would you like that? I'd like it. What's the use? Will you at least talk to me? No, you spanked me, and I'm sore at you. Look, Snooks, I spanked you in the first place for your own good. And in the second place, you're not sore, you're angry. Do you understand? Yeah, I'm angry in the second place. Right, now come over here and sit down. No! Why not? Because I'm sore in the first place. <laughs>